So it's time for a gardening week video and I was going to harvest my garlic and I took the first one out, sliced it in half. I think it's not quite ready yet. So the cloves, although they're distinct, they're not very well differentiated. And so I think I'll just leave them for another week. And so they're, they're looking okay there. Pretty, pretty happy with them. The size is not too bad. This is a soft neck. They're not as big as hard necks, but they keep better. Uh, so instead, well not actually instead, but as well as not harvesting the garlic, I planted a little bed of lettuce. I normally like to do my lettuce at home at this time of year because I can just keep on top of it, keep on top of the watering. Um, but this year, because we had a problem last year and the previous year with lettuce aphid, root aphid, nothing which you can do about it and I've never had it on the allotment, so I've decided to plant some of my lettuces on the allotment this year as a kind of hedge against the main crop lettuces getting lettuce aphid. And if they do, then at least we won't be without lettuce because we'll have this little bed. And I interplanted it with a whole load of salad onions in the centre, and then all around the outside I put a main crop onion, Leela, which will start bulbing really soon because it's so late in the season. and so it won't form a big bulb because it's not got enough green growth to form a big bulb, but it'll form a nice little one about this sort of size. Super sweet is the idea. So small, super sweet bulbs for salads. And yeah, cleared the last of my calabrese beds on, the, on this plot now, uh, apart from some little baby ones I planted last week. Um, so we won't now have any calabrese, I don't think, until late summer and we just have to do without it because we just don't have enough space everything has to kind of turn its focus towards true summer crops like peppers and tomatoes and courgettes and the like or autumn winter and spring crops and about two-thirds of my plot now is planted for autumn winter and spring and the rest as I say just for these true summer crops so I popped in the last bed of peppers and I am experimenting with my pepper timings this year so I did one batch really early, which we've just started to harvest. These are sweet peppers. And I did a kind of mid batch, which of them, well, I consider like my main crop. And then I did a slightly later crop. It's that later crop that I've just popped in. They look, I think, quite nice. I'm quite happy with them. To be honest, they look a little bit healthier than the others. They always look, I find my peppers the way I do it, because I don't have a great growing environment for peppers. They always look a bit shabby, let's say, at this time of year. But once they get in the ground and they get nice sort of weather conditions, not too hot, not too cold and all that, um, they just, you know, they really thrive and they put on a lot of new growth. And um, yeah, and, and they look fantastic in sort of about six weeks time. So hopefully that pattern will repeat itself. And that is pretty much me done for Monday. So it's Tuesday and Debbie and I have been out for the day. We just popped up the coast to Cleveland's, which is our favourite spot for a bit of paddling and sitting on the prom and all of that. And yeah, it's a lovely little spot. It's different to where we are because we still live by the beach here, uh, but we don't often see the sea. The difference in Cleveland's is you see the sea every day. Um, I went to the cinema and watched Top Gun, which was, I think, absolutely fabulous. You know, as somebody who watched the original, you know, it's just a great, the perfect sequel, really. I uh, really, really enjoyed that. And I'm just down on the allotment now. And there are some things that really need harvesting every day. That In winter, of course, that is never an issue. But, you know, in the, this time of year, we basically have like six cucumbers in the polytunnel every single day to harvest and pretty much the same again. Back at home, got loads and loads of strawberries and you know they really need harvesting every day to be at their best courgettes and things like that you know so loads of stuff that's just being harvested daily and of course the big weekly harvest that we do on a Sunday as well but you really wouldn't want to leave a punnet of strawberries like that on the plant for a whole week so um, it's just nice to pop down here and just sit in the polytunnel chill out a little bit do a bit of reading and say harvesting and watering it's really lovely. I actually did a video about the joys of polytunnels and the sort of special way that you feel when you sit in a space that is kind of opaque but light. 
you know, the kind of privacy that you get in here and the diffuse light is really magical. Uh, so if you want more on that, then see the video and some really nice comments as well that are worth reading, especially if you're considering whether you should get a polysol or not. I think you'll be pretty convinced after reading all those comments. So it's Saturday, it's cooled down a little bit. I uh, have just been out cycling really. Uh, went up to Cleveland's up the coast on the bike and uh, back home and just pulling these two little bits of garlic from the garden beds. We always do a little bit of garlic in the beds at home. Um, just really as a hedge against anything going disastrously wrong on the allotment. There's only 70 bulbs here, I think. Hopefully we'll get a lot more than that when we harvest the allotment beds. Very shady at home, so bulbs tend to be quite small, especially these here. But anyway, pretty pleased with them. Keep us going for a while. So I've also just made up my first batch of BT and sprayed all the brassicas in the front garden. And since I have all my brassica seedlings outside, I've sprayed all of those as well because little caterpillars can wreak absolute havoc with seedlings. And just for good measure, I've, so I've sprayed my beetroot as well because we've got quite a bit of leaf miner around. I'm not really sure whether leaf miner can be addressed with BT, but uh, well, it doesn't hurt. And my first batch of tumbler tomatoes are ready now, and so I'll be harvesting those over the next four weeks. And by then, hopefully, this batch that's in flower right now will be ready and then by the time they're finishing hopefully this new batch that I've just planted will be ready. We really like tumbler and it's just nice to have some tomatoes in the garden as well as in the polytunnel. I've got another batch just to fill in these last few containers once the carrots and potatoes and things are harvested. It's Sunday we've just finished the harvest. Pretty nice table this week. Lots going on, lots of new things. So I'll just take you quickly through it. So we've got the salad bases here. I'll top those off with all the sprinkles in a minute. And here we've got something new for me, which is a baby leaf salad mix. I'm actually not, I'm going to integrate that into uh, the other salad mixes. Uh, just see how we get on with it. There's loads of different things in there, like lots of different like baby kale leaves, pak choy leaves and that sort of thing, sorrel and the like. First harvest of the golden purslane here. This is a gorgeous salad ingredient. I mean, some people cook with it, but we only really use it in salads. And the first pick is never that great, but uh, still looking forward to it. And this is actually the first proper harvest, I would say, of tomatoes. We've been snacking on them for a few weeks, but that's the first time we've actually had enough to uh, put in the salad. So we've not bought any salad ingredients so far this week. Cucumbers, I think we've got about 70 cucumbers harvested this week, which is about what we need really to keep everybody in cucumbers. And my cucumbers in the conservatory are just starting to fade a little bit now. You know, we've been harvesting since April. Uh, the ones in the polytunnel are coming on stream and my next batch of little baby cucumber seedlings are ready for planting out so hopefully we'll keep on going so this at the back here is spinach so this is Mikado Asian spinach and that is just starting to go to seed so we'll probably only have one more pick of that and then that is New Zealand spinach and that is just coming on stream so hopefully we'll get a nice continuity of supply Peas there for the salad mixes, carrots for the salad mixes, and a few potatoes. So these are the last of the first early potatoes. And so we'll be on to the second early soon. So volumes should pick up a little bit at that point. But even so, that is still a nice little weekly harvest. Uh, broad beans, so that is the last of the second early broad beans, so we're on to the main crop broad beans next week, but we should also have French beans next week, so that'll be really nice. Um, rhubarb, courgettes, 
And we've actually started picking the garlic now and uh, still got lots more to pick, but most of that will come out next week. A few more little carrots there. That is the last of the small beetroots. So we're on to the large beetroots now. Uh, and yeah, they're still, even the large ones are still really tender, not at all woody or anything like that. And they should keep us going now uh, until the early main crop beetroot are ready. So they, we're still on early beetroots. So these are the onions. Most of these are good quality ones. Um, not going to seed or anything like that. There's just a couple going to seed at the back there. These are the salad onions. Thickening up a bit now. I like mine a bit thinner, but uh, I'll put up with that for a few weeks. And we've got all sorts of different uh, brassica leaves here. And I've actually started taking the sprout tops off the early sprouts. And as a result of that, I'm actually starting to get some little sprouts now forming on the stems. So I should have some lovely sprouts next week. And just a few radishes, just a few of these sugar snap peas. And what are these? Turnips, chili peppers, first pick of the raspberries. Some nice little cooking tomatoes there. And just the strawberries. I mean, most of the strawberries we're eating fresh every day but uh, there was enough there to pick a little box. So I think I've found everything on the table. How many things, how many different varieties of veg do you think are on that table? Have a think. So there's 40 different things, 40 different varieties on that table. So that is well in excess of my 30 different things target and things can only get better from here that is the joy of summer so i think we're we'll finished with that my name is steve this is the seaside kitchen garden and allotment channel and i'll see you soon